So this is the second scenario for the hairpin nut, whereas in the server and the client is behind different ports, as you can see on the diagram, the network diagram. So the server is behind the port three. Clients are behind port one. Port two is actually connected to the internet from where the external client will access the server using the public IP. So the public IP is 14.140.40.108 configured on port two, which will then get translated to the server IP 192.168.137.132. So the idea behind the hairpin NAT is to allow access to the server only to the publicly configured hairpin. And looking at the direction of the traffic flow makes it a uh, hairpin NAT. Let's try to configure this on the 48 firewall. By the way, the configuration that I have here, here may not work on the older version of the 48 firewall which is below 640. So this was tested above all the versions 700, 702, 704. Okay, so as you can see, as for the diagram, we have three interfaces. Port three is where the server is. Port one connects to the client and port two is actual internet interface so first of all we will have to create a web object so i guess i already have the configuration so i'll try to delete the existing configuration Okay, so now we will create the web option. Let's name it well, Hippin now. And I'm not selecting any interface. I'm keeping it to any. And then static net external IP is going to be IP address on port two fourteen one forty forty one zero eight. Let's try to configure this. Now I'll try to enter the server. IP. As you can see on the diagram, the server IP is 192.168.132.132. This is the actual server IP internal to the network, which is behind port P and I'm going to only allow port forwarding for the TCP traffic. External port is going to be one, two, three, four, five. And internal port is going to be the actual SSH port. You can configure this object as per your network requirement. So now that we have the web objects configured, we'll go back to the firewall policy. We will try to create the allow policy for the normal internet connectivity. 
for the normal internet actor, which means uh, anybody from internet can access the server to this IP address. So let's try to configure that. So I'm going to keep incoming into the last port, which is receiving the traffic. Outgoing as port three, which is sending the traffic out. And I'm going to keep the source as any for now, but you can filter it out as per your network requirement. Destination is going to be the case in that object that we have created, as you can see on the screen. 14140-4108 will be translated to the actual IP address of the server 192.168.137.132 for on the port 22 external mapping is 12345. Service here in my case I'm selecting it as all, but you can select SSH only. Let's try to And I am enabling the NOAA so that I do not have any issues with the reverse traffic coming back to the power. Not necessarily required, but then I am doing the NAT, so that NAT as well. Click OK. Now we have the help in that policy. Or allowing the traffic from the internet towards the door. How about the internal clients? Well, for them to access the server, we'll have to first uh, create a policy from port one to port two so that the client, when they try to access the server using 14140.40.101, gets to the port 2 and then gets translated back to the server on the actual IP. Instead of client going directly via the internal route, we would force the client to use 14140.40.108, which in turn goes from port 1 to port 2 and then port 2 to port 3 out to the server. So that is all the help in that here. Let's try to create that policy. So this is allow internal. Port is going to be port one, which connects our clients in the network and ten ten zero. Outgoing is going to be the port 2, where our public IP is configured, which will be used by the client to access the so Source is going to be any. This thing is going to be any, my case. And I'm allowing only it search. And I'm doing the NAT, but no need of that. Your network is designed properly. So now we have two policy. You want to allow the external access, another to allow the clients which are behind the port one. To get to port two and then from port two it gets translated back to the server so now let's try to see some logs okay so this is my server this is the 40 gate firewall and Pass. We have our internal client.
Okay, as you can see, the internal client will access the server using the IP address 14140.40.108 on port 12345. Let's try to access that. And at the same time, what I can do is Okay, let's try to initiate some traffic. And let's see if we have anything here. This is the firewall interface. Seems pretty slow. Okay, so we have not configured our policy accordingly. So instead of custom one, two, three, four, five port, we have defined the standard port. We'll try to alter them. Let's try to use the same service on another policy as well. Now let's try to test the connection from the internal plan. As you can see, I have this session from the client IP 10.10.130 10, 10, towards 14.140.40.108 on 12345 port, which is actually getting translated to, to the actual server IP, which is 192.168.137.132 on port 22. And since we have the source translation enabled as well, this IP will then get translated to the exit interface IP which is our port 3. Thank 
this is the actual server IP replying to the IP address on the firewall on port 3. Since there was a source transformation as well when the packet left the firewall, and then this IP will then be translated to the actual client IP 10.10.10.130 10, 10, 10, and will then be sent to the client. So, which basically confirms that the hairpin NAT is working fine, and you can see. So, you can see here. And that's all in this video. See you in the next video. Until then, bye.